I'll never forget the day my best friend had to watch his two sons fight in the Battle of the Brothers. A reckless truck driver driving over a major highway at an insane speed was to be indirectly the way I was introduced to this case. Take it easy, you maniac! Jenny, my secretary in my day-to-day -day work, when I'm disguised as Tobor the detective, was out for a pleasure drive. Did you see that truck? He's driving so fast, he'll probably cause an accident. There he goes! <laughs> Awful accident. That truck crashed through the guardrail on the overpass and landed on the sports car. Completely demolished the car and truck. Did anyone survive? Yes. There's the girl that was driving the sports car, and over there is the crazy truck driver. I don't know how they were saved. How were they saved? Were you the one who rescued those people, mister? Doesn't matter, really. I'm turning this young lady over to you. And she seems to have come, too. Oh, my. I guess you must have pulled me out of that car. You were just lucky, miss. I happened along at the right moment. It might have been done by almost anyone. I hope you are all right now. Oh, but you... I'll say goodbye, young lady. Eighth man. I'm sure he's eighth man. What was that you said? It's strange. He pretended that he didn't recognize me. I met the strangest man today, Tobor. Really? And who was the strange man, Jenny? Go on, guess. Who do you think, Tobor? Hmm, Mickey Mantle? De Gaulle? Come on, you're kidding me, Tobor. All right, I'll tell you. It was Eighth Man. Eighth Man himself? Yes, Eighth Man. What do you think of that? Eighth Man? And you say you're positive about it? Come in, the door's open. It's him. Oh, dear. So we meet again, young lady. This is the man I told you about, Tobor. What a strange coincidence. I assume you are Detective Tobor. My name is Ken. He does look like Eighth Man. I'm here on business, Mr. Tobor. May I sit down? Oh, excuse me. Yes, of course. Please be seated. Ken saved me after that auto accident I had, Tobor. Is there any reason why you stare so intently at my face? Uh, no. You said you were here on business? Can you locate a missing person for me, Mr. Tobor? I can try. Who is it? The man I am looking for is a scientist who disappeared about five years ago from the military laboratory of the Republic of Armaco. I have reliable information that he now lives in seclusion in this country. His name is Genius, and he's a professor. Can you find him? Well, can you? You said Genius? That's right, Tobor. Professor Genius. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I... You come highly recommended as a detective. I don't think you'll have any trouble locating Professor Genius for me, Mr. Tobor. I'll keep in touch. Wait just one minute, please. Why does he want the professor? I'm going out, and I have no idea when I'll be back, Jenny. Very well. Mr. Tobor certainly got excited about something. <laughs> This strange man who looked like me was looking for the man who created me, Professor Genius. I rushed to the professor's home. Eighth man, are you sure? Tell me, you say he had your face? Absolutely. That fact seems to upset you, sir. His name? You say his name is Ken? Eighth man, Ken? He has come at last. Who is Ken, Professor Genius? Please tell me. Is he an enemy of yours? If he is, I'm ready to fight him for you, right now. No, Eighth Man. Ken is not my enemy. Please don't worry about him. But, Professor... Please, just leave me alone for a while. I need solitude to think. If you need me, just call. I'll come. So the boy is in this country, Ken. Yes, Professor, I'm right here, right now. What? 
We meet again, eh, Professor? It is you, Ken. How did you ever find me, son? Remember, I was always a bright boy, Professor, right? What are you doing here, Kenneth? What do you want? We meet again after five long years, Professor. Is that any way to greet a fellow? Well, Ken, I, uh... You might have said, good to see you, or welcome, my long-lost son. I know why you came here, Kenneth. So that's why your greeting was so cold. All right, what is your answer? I will not go back to that dictatorship in Armaco. Then you realize I must take you back even if I have to use force, dear father. Do you understand? I understand, and you won't be able to do it. No more talk. Go home. Eighth man won't stop me. I have my assignment, and I am taking you back to Armaco with me. You have a debt to pay, and you will pay it. I'll have to call eighth man. Oh, no. Oh. You won't be calling anybody. Watch. What do you think now? Kenneth, you're a... You're right. I'm a robot. It surprises you, doesn't it, Professor? Oh, no. A robot. You may be a robot, but you can never defeat Eighth Man. That's the main reason I volunteered to become a robot. I hate him. You left me in Armaco and took him with you. Remember, Father? I had already lost you, Ken, when you joined the Armaco secret police. Too bad you didn't show the same loyalty. That is part of your debt. We'll soon see how good a robot you are. Although you are my son, I must stop you, Kenneth. I'm afraid you can't, Professor. That's just a demonstration. I'm ashamed to have a father like you. One who would desert his glorious country when his scientific skills are most needed. But Ken, listen. I won't listen. You could have created weapons that would help Armaco conquer the world. And you deserted us. I would not build such weapons. Uh, I cannot think of you as my father. My boy. Faith man is your boy, you self-righteous, stubborn old man. And I'm going to break him into a thousand little pieces. You know, Professor Genius is acting very strangely about this young fellow, Ken. I don't know what to do, Chief Fumble Thumbs. I don't understand it, but he must have a reason, I guess. I'll activate my memory projector. Now, let's watch. Amazing. He looks exactly like you, Eighth Man. Did Professor Genius tell you anything at all? He obviously didn't want to talk about it, Chief, and he seemed very depressed. That's why I worry about him so much. Well, he's certainly helped the Metropolitan Bureau often enough, so there's no reason why we can't give him a hand now. I'll investigate this fellow, Ken, thoroughly. All right? Thanks a lot, Chief. I didn't think we'd catch Professor Genius so quickly, Ken. You did a good job. Now, let's go see how he is. Are you prepared to go back to Armaco and work in our laboratories? I will not make weapons for conquest, and you, Dr. Goal, shouldn't either. I don't want you to lecture me, my dear professor. At least Dr. Goal is loyal to Armaco. That's certainly more than can be said for you. You are a traitor. As a matter of fact, Dr. Goal built this robot body for me. I feel as close to Ken now as you do to Eighth Man, professor. Can't you realize what a terrible time I had explaining to my superior in the secret police after you deserted? I made a solemn promise to make up for what you had done to Armaco, to destroy Eighth Man, and to bring you back to work in the war laboratories of Armaco. Ken volunteered to become the human material for a robot to replace the one you stole from Armaco, the one from which you subsequently built Eighth Man. Well, are you going to return voluntarily? I will not help your war-mad leaders. Confound it! Is this my father? This eternal idealist? Will you ever change? All right. I'll come back to talk to you after I finish Eighth Man. <gasps> Stay away from Eighth Man, please, Ken. Why? Are you afraid I'll destroy that precious robot of yours, father? Well, I'll bring him back to you in broken fragments. Just you wait. 
Ken, don't try it. It hurts, doesn't it, Professor? It's almost like having two sons fighting against each other. Please stop them, Dr. Gall. They are both bound to get hurt. Don't you care about Ken at all? I have confidence that my robot can destroy yours, genius. Why, you're mad. I'll make a deal with you, Professor Genius. You come back to Armico with us to work in the laboratories voluntarily, and I'll stop the battle between Ken and Eighth Man. I... I don't know. Make up your mind quickly. It may soon be too late. Tobor, what is it? You look so troubled lately. Can I help? Don't you even want to tell me about it? It might make you feel a little better anyway. Jenny, I'm afraid this is one thing you just can't do anything about. Tobor Detective Agency? Yes, Mr. Tobor is in. For you, Tobor, the chief. Good. We checked out that fellow Ken and found out his name. He's from the Republic of Armaco, and his full name is Kenneth Genius. You're sure about the name? Kenneth Genius, Chief, you made sure it's Genius? Yes. Do you think he's related to Professor Genius? I don't know, Chief. The whole thing is very, very strange indeed. Well, what do you intend to do now, Eighth Man? Any idea? I'm going to have a talk with Professor Genius. <laughs> Genius! Professor Genius, where are you? I don't like the looks of this at all. There's been violence here. The professor, he must have been abducted. There must be some clues here. That desk. I wonder. That photograph. So, he must be the professor's son. That's why my face is molded after his. Of course, I should have guessed. And that must be Mrs. Genius, the boy's mother. Ken must be here to try to take his father back to Armico. What an awful situation for the professor. He must be torn between the love of a father and his hatred for the things the boy now stands for. Terrible. Hi, Eighth Man. Oh, you're Ken. Didn't you hear me? You're not very alert, are you? I could have caught you unaware and beaten you up, couldn't I, Eighth Man? Don't talk foolishness. What have you done with your father? Look at your face. You're nothing but a copy of me. Give me back my face. Cut it out, Ken. Is it foolishness to want my face back? Talk sense, Ken. All right. I plan to take my face back from you, robot. By force, since it will be a pleasure to do it that way. You haven't got a chance. I'm a robot made of steel, you know. Really? So what? Take this! Oh, so you're really a robot, just like I am. Not just like you are, but much better. I'm stronger and smarter, and to prove it, I'm going to tear you limb from limb. Wow. Ken, why must we fight? After all, we're almost brothers. There's no sense to it. Don't talk so much. Just defend yourself, Eighth Man. I'm trying to avoid this fight, Ken. Why do you insist on continuing it? Tell me! Because my father chose you over loyalty to his country and to his family. You're making a bad mistake, Ken. No more talk! Fight! <laughs> Trying to run away, you coward! Stand and fight me, I dare you! I'm running away so I won't have to hurt you. And you'll never be able to keep up with me. He's gone. Obviously, he's hiding. Eighth Man, listen to me and listen carefully. Come out of hiding and fight me right now. Or are you too frightened? I have an idea. Once I saved Jenny from serious injury, don't you think I now have a right to get even for my help? I will give you time. Meet me here at 4 o'clock this afternoon to fight to the end. If you don't, I promise you Jenny will suffer for it. Think it over well. Would he actually do a thing like that? Poor Jenny, why should she be in the middle? Remember, four o'clock this afternoon. Be here, or I go get Jenny. What a terrible choice I was faced with. I could fight Ken and destroy him, and break his father's heart. And after all, Professor Genius was as much a father to me in a way. Or I could not show up and put Jenny in danger. What should I do? Eighth man, there you 
are, thank goodness. I was worried. What will you do about that fight? That's just what I've been thinking about, Chief. Well? Ken's hatred of me is so intense, I'm afraid I'm going to find it necessary to fight him. But I don't want to hurt him. Well then, what on earth can be done? I'm afraid the fight will have to take place. And I can't be sure who will win. How can you say that? For Professor Genius, it will be like watching two sons fight. I'm sure he still loves Ken. Can you imagine how terrible it would be for him if both of us were destroyed in such a battle? Hmm. I can't make Professor Genius suffer. And yet I must fight. There is only one course open. I think I'm beginning to get the idea. And I don't like it, Eighth Man. You're going to go into a battle you don't want to win. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple, Chief. It depends on how strong Ken turns out to be. If we're equally matched, it would mean destruction for both. That must not happen. A battle between brothers. This shouldn't happen. I can't help crying. Jenny and Professor Genius are more important than my personal welfare. I'm sorry, but I just can't help crying about it. Don't go. Don't be ashamed of your tears, Fumble Thumbs. I, too, am crying inside. Although as a robot, I have no tears to show for it. Why well, can't Ken understand your terrible sadness in having to fight him? It's time. Goodbye, Chief Fumble Thumbs, good friend. Remember me to Jenny with... with affection. Oh, eighth man! And take care of Skip, will you? Ah! It's too late. He's gone. The fight will go on. It's four o'clock. Maybe he won't come. He'll be here, I'm positive. Here he comes now. Now I'll finish you, Eighth Man. Eighth Man, must this go on? I'm sorry, Professor, but I have no choice. Ken, please, you just have to stop. We must fight. This is madness. Do you hear me? You are both my sons and precious to me. Please, please don't carry out this terrible tragedy. I think you're ready to cooperate, right, Professor Genius? Agree to come to Armaco and I stop the fight. Very well. There is no alternative. You win. All right. Stop. Stop the fight, Ken. Absolutely not. Stop. I said stop right now, Ken. I have waited five years for this. I let myself be made into a robot for this moment. Ken, please, I don't think you can win. You don't believe that. You only say it thinking I would stop. But nothing on earth could prevent this battle. Ready? I'm ready. Come on. Nothing on earth can stop them now. He disobeyed me. He's completely mad. And now I must make a terrible choice. My true son, whom I have loved, but who is full of hate. Or the son that loves me and fills my heart. I must choose. Now, Eighth Man, I'll break you into little bits. Strange, Eighth Man is hardly putting up a fight. Oh, no, I understand. He's sacrificing himself because Ken is my son. Now I know what I must do. Eighth Man, hear me. Fight! I want you to fight and win! Eighth Man, get up and fight for me, please! Your son! I wish you could both be saved, but I've lost Ken. So that's it. Eighth man is your choice. I thought so. Well, it doesn't matter, Professor. I've hated you ever since you refused to help us conquer the world. What? No, my son. Here's a surprise. I call these my finger robots. They operate like five of my fingers. Now, do you think you can stop me, Eighth man? Is this an invention of yours, Goo? It is. And now Eighth Man is done. I wouldn't be too sure if I were you, Dr. Goo. One against five. He hasn't got a chance. Ignore the finger robots, Eighth Man. Concentrate on Ken himself. Yes, I understand. Finger robots, attack! Remember, Eighth Man, get Ken. Right. 
Professor. Look out! Here they come! Finger robots! They crashed into each other and exploded. Well done, Eighth Man. I'm not through. Give up now. Please, Ken. No! We fight to the end, I tell you. To the bitter end. Too bad. Enough, Ken! Enough. Ken! Ken, my boy. Ken, forgive me. I was a poor father to you, but I did what I had to do. I am the one who should beg forgiveness, father. I must have been out of my mind. It's better this way. Ken, my son, even as I hold you in my arms, I weep for what might have been. I'm thinking clearly for the first time. I love you dearly, Father. Please, try to remember me that way. Oh, Ken. Professor Genius, sir, I, uh... At the very last, for a moment, I had him back. You seemed certain that I would win, Professor. How did you know for sure? Ken was a robot, except for his brain. He never had a chance, Professor. That's right. They couldn't duplicate your electronic brain, so they used his human one. No human brain could stand the pressure of such a fight. I see. And my electronic brain gave me greater speed. Well, it's all over. I'm afraid that is the way it was meant to be. But you suffered such terrible anguish, Professor Genius. As I have told you, a man must be prepared to suffer for that which he knows to be right. The future of all humankind was in the balance.